Now that we have a good idea as to what the Arrhenius parameters represent, let's now use the Arrhenius equation to determine the activation energy and exponential prefactor of a process. In this example, we will examine the decomposition of methyl orange, a pH indicator, in an acid tin solution. It is a third order process according to the rate being equal to the rate constant times the concentration of methyl orange times the concentration of tin ions times the concentration of hydronium. We can flood this reaction with tin and acid to make it a pseudo first order reaction where only the concentration of methyl orange matters. And then by varying the initial concentrations of the acid and tin in solution, we can also fit for the order of tin and hydronium and determine the rate constant for the reaction. The following temperature dependent data and rate constants are measured and fitted according to the Arrhenius equation, rearranged in order to plot a linear expression. In this case, the natural logarithm of the rate constant is the dependent variable, and the inverse of the temperature in Kelvin is the independent variable. According to the equation of our line, the natural logarithm of A is the y-intercept, and the negative of the activation energy over R is the slope. The linear plot on the right illustrates a fit of the data according to the Arrhenius equation expressed as a line. So now that we have this data, and we have this fit to this line, which is this y is equal to minus 3234.5x plus 10.91, what our job is is that we're going to now determine what is the activation energy and the pre-exponential factor based on this information. And how we're going to do that is, again, we're just going to state that this natural logarithm of kf, that's our independent variable, or sorry, our dependent variable, our natural logarithm of a, this is our y-intercept, our negative ea over r, that's going to be our slope, and in this case this 1 over temperature, that's going to be our dependent variable. And so using this way of parsing up this equation, this Arrhenius equation that we have, using the fit that we have written down over here of our data, we're going to be able to put together what is our activation energy and what is our pre-exponential factor. So starting first with our y-intercept, we're going to write down then that our natural logarithm of a, which is our y-intercept, and over here our y-intercept is equal to 10.91. And so that just means that when I solve for a over here, I'm going to have a being equal to e raised to the power of 10.91 which means that my exponential prefactor in this case is 54720.8. Finding the slope is also very straightforward. In this case, I can just write slope, and that's going to be equal to negative 3234.5, because again, it's just this value that I have right here from my equation. And I know that my slope is equal to the negative of the activation energy divided by r. And so in this case, since I'm trying to solve for the activation energy, I can cancel out the minuses on both sides. And I can then write, well, the activation energy is equal to 3234.5 times the gas constant, 8.3145. And so that leaves me with an activation energy of 26,893 joules per mole. And again, the one thing that I'm going to point out here is that if you ever get an activation energy that's negative, then you would know that immediately that that must be incorrect because you cannot have an activation energy that's negative. Once the activation energy and the rate constant at one temperature is known, the rate constant can be found at a different temperature. Let's start by writing the Arrhenius equation at two different temperatures, denoting one of the two temperatures with a Kf prime and a temperature prime. We can then subtract the first from the second, giving natural logarithm of kf prime minus the natural logarithm of kf and that's equal to the negative of the activation energy over rt prime plus the activation energy over rt and if we distribute out the activation energy and the gas constant and rearrange what we get is the natural logarithm of kf prime minus the natural logarithm of kf and that's equal to the activation energy over r times 1 over t minus 1 over t prime and using this relationship, we can find the rate constant at a different temperature once it's known at a given temperature. So let's now do a quick example where we actually calculate the rate constant at a different temperature. So in this example, we wanted to determine the rate of decomposition of methyl orange in your stomach. And this is just in case if you were to actually accidentally ingest some of this pH indicator in your stomach and you would know 
well, how fast would this actually decompose potentially into something that's more benign? Or would you have to induce vomiting to get it out of your system before it actually caused any toxic reaction? So if we were to assume that it follows the same decomposition route, meaning that its activation energy in your stomach is 26.9 kilojoules per mole, then we're going to determine what is the rate constant at typical body temperature, which is 37 degrees Celsius. And this is assuming that we'd already measured the rate constant at 296, to somewhere a little above room temperature, and that being equal to 1.004 being the rate constant at that temperature. So we would start with the expression that we'd just written out a second ago, this natural logarithm of k prime minus the natural logarithm of k, and that's equal to the activation energy over the gas constant times 1 over t minus 1 over t prime, where again, these are rate constants, these aren't equilibrium constants, so that's why I usually denote them with an f. Um, my next step is I'm going to rearrange a little bit, so I have the natural logarithm of the rate constant, the primed rate constant, and that's equal to the activation energy over the gas constant, 1 over t minus 1 over t prime, and to that I'm going to add the natural logarithm of the original rate constant, the one that I already know. Now I'm going to substitute in numbers the natural logarithm of the rate constant prime, the activation energy, 26.9, and I'm adding times 10 to the 3 because I have to write it in joules per mole. And that's because my gas constant, 8.3145, is in joules per mole per Kelvin. Over here, I'm going to write in my temperatures. This is my original temperature, my T, 296.65. And from that, I'm going to subtract 1 over 37 plus 273.15 being the conversion from Celsius to Kelvin. And to that, I'm going to add the natural logarithm of the rate constant that I already know, 1.004. And so I start to calculate these numbers, the natural logarithm of K prime, that's equal to 0 0.4747 plus 0 0.00399, which means that my rate constant, my new rate constant, my Kf prime, that's equal to the exponent raised to the power of 0 0.4787, which means that my new rate constant at 37 degrees is 1.614. And so now using this updated rate constant, where this is the rate constant at 37 degrees Celsius, we would then be able to then predict, if we know the integrated rate law expression, how long it takes for methylorans to decay if it was inside a biological system. The Arrhenius equation is an empirical relationship relating the rate constant to the temperature according to the rate constant Kf being equal to an exponential prefactor A times E raised to the power of the negative of the activation energy divided by RT. The pre-exponential factor A can be interpreted as the frequency at which reactants collide with the correct orientation in order for a reaction to occur. This can also be interpreted as being dependent on the thermal energy of the system and the change in entropy between the reactants and the activated complex. The activation energy, Ea, is the difference in energy between the reactants and the activated complex. Once the activation energy and the rate constant are known at one temperature, the rate constant at another temperature can be found according to the natural logarithm of K prime minus the natural logarithm of K being equal to the activation energy divided by R times 1 over t minus 1 over t prime.